Hello and welcome to this demonstration on Harness Deployment Strategies. My name is Gabriel and I am a Platform Engineer here at Harness. Today, we will explore the power and flexibility of Harness as we dig into our most famous deployment method offerings. As you know, rolling deployments, blue-green and the most famous one, canaries. Let's do it. Okay, so let's kick things off with the rolling deployment offering by Harness. As you imagine, this is the simplest form of deployment where new versions of your application are released by directly updating the instances. Naturally, Harness will respect your Kubernetes rolling update strategy. This is expected, right? This includes any existing liveness, readiness and startup probes, but also other preferences such as your max and available pods and other more advanced features from your Kubernetes cluster. So that's native and Harness is not doing anything under the hood that you might not understand. So in a rolling deployment, the application is gradually rolled out and replaced it. And when I say replace it, I'm talking about pods, right? So this will ensure zero downtime and allows for monitoring and addressing issues during the rollout. So it's common here to have CV steps where you can connect your application performance management tools, Prometheus and other tools just to shift left the feedback and make sure that your new release is safe uh, to be released to production. As you're seeing here in the screen, with Harness, it's a breeze to set up and manage this whole process. So let me show you some of the steps of a common rollout deployment by Harness. Okay, so this is my Java application based on Spring Boot. It has some actuators and a single page to play with feature flags. But uh, besides that, the deployment strategy here is using my Helm chart. So Harness is very good with Helm charts, as you know. So the process is super straightforward. I'm just going to fetch the files here using the delegate. And let me open the console view just to be easier to spot that. And I get all my overrides. So I have my values YAML. I can have overrides from Harness and from GitHub on other repos. And I have uh, the processing of that. And then Harness will use uh, the CLIs like a Helm template and kubectl to make sure that I can apply all my manifests here because the template, uh, the placeholders, not only the Helm chart placeholders, but actually also the harness variables. Everything is here is processed, uh, processed and rendered. And then uh, uh, harness, we will apply that as a normal workload. So it's pretty much as a kubectl apply. So as you can see, there's nothing weird here going on. And also, as I told you, I can wait for that I can monitor the release uh, and then I can wait, wait for the steady state. And this is where I'm waiting for the readiness startup probes. So when I'm good, I can just wrap up and that's a deployment, right? So uh, as you can see here, I have deployed a node port uh, service. Let me show you real quick. Uh, it's here. So as you can see here on my service, that's a node part. So this is the application running. So let's pretend this is production already, right? Because I'm going to show you uh, extra features using this very same application. So, okay, now we have this version 504, December version. So I can simply go here and do a rolling deployment. So I'll be using 505 this time. And as you can see, I'm going to fast forward this because you already know how deployment works, but just to make sure you understand that. So, okay, Harness is doing pretty much, but uh, it, it is equivalent to a kubectl rollout status here. Uh, so after my probes, I know for sure my application is running. And now let's check what is going on here on the node board. So I have 504. Now I have 505. And consider that I, I could have multiple pods here. This is a normal rollout deployment uh, as you would do with a kubectl apply. Okay. So that's it for rolling deployments. Just as a reminder, 
uh, in a real situation, we would have like a CI and CD with multiple environments and triggers, right? So let's suppose that my CI application sends uh, the Docker image to the registry and then Harness will react to that and deploy to maybe development environments and staging before rolling out to production. And this include any governance, ITSM, uh, steps that you might want, but also harness OPA, like you can have policy as codes to control and, and make sure that you are good to release to a, a given target environment. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so that's it for rolling deployments with harness. And next, let's see the blue green deployment. So, okay, in a blue green deployment, Two identical environments for staging and production traffic will run simultaneously with different versions of the service, so different versions of your application at the same time, behind the same service. So, as you might imagine, this will increase your workload sizing inside the Kubernetes cluster. So, when you're going to deploy a new version of your application, this is going to happen in the staging environment. And the staging environment is just a flag because we are going to be using staging and production uh, interchangeably, okay? So when the new version is verified, you run all your CV steps, you know you're good to go, then the network traffic is gonna be switched between the two environments. So this staging environment becomes the production this time. So when you do a new version, this is gonna be like, a, the staging becomes the production again, so since this is behind a single entry point, the user experience will not be impacted. And it's so easy to roll back, right? It's just a matter of uh, doing the flip again to the stage environment, which is running the less stable version. So pretty much blue green for now. And as you might imagine, Harness will handle everything for you. So that's the reason you might see extra labels and selector on your workloads, objects, and entities. And so let's do it. Let's show you the blue green deployment in action. So, okay. I went with the default configuration that Harness deploys when you click on the blue green deployment option. And it created uh, two steps here, the stage deployment and the swap between stage, uh, the, the stage service. Uh, in a real situation, you would add a lot of steps here just to make sure that uh, you would run validations and governance between swapping that especially if you're talking about a production target environment. But this is super straightforward, guys. So pretty much I am calling the initial version, the version 504, as the stable version. And I'm going to deploy the, the other version, which is 505 in the green environment. Uh, those terms, they are interchangeable because Harness will always keep two services in the Kubernetes cluster so you can test both entry points. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, after the deployment happens, a rolling deployment normal, uh, Harness will just swap the selectors between the blue and green, so the, the, the stage deployment becomes the production. But since this is the first deployment, we just have one deployment going on in the cluster right now. So let me swap to my uh, subsystem here so I can show you the Kubernetes cluster and that namespace uh, right now uh, after the deployment happened. So again, this is the first deployment. This is the initial version, but I am already using blue green and nothing here uh, is broken. It harness uh, just works well with that situation as well. So, okay, let me open the subsystem here. I'm running a Docker desktop this time, but it could be anything like that. So let me get all here. So as you can see, I have two entry points here. I'm using the node port service. Harness just respect whatever you put in, on your manifest or templates. And I have a single deployment and now it's calling blue. But as you might expect, this blue is connected to the stable service here. So let's check by using selectors, okay? There's nothing special here. Uh, this is pretty much just service selectors. So let's see what happens when I go to my host again. Just one second. Let me just remove this from your screen. Okay, so let's see here, uh, local host, and that's it. Okay, so version 504, everything is happen is working here, like my React, so we're good. So let's start doing a blue-green deployment for the version 505 this time. Okay, so let's see a blue-green deployment to the new version. 
while I'm not tearing down any of the stable deployment, which is version 504. So I hopefully expect uh, the two versions to be running in prod parallel. So that's the deal with Blue Green, right? It's a bit more expensive, but uh, it's super quick to swap between the services. Uh, when I say services, I'm saying uh, the application version, right? So again, this is pretty usual, so I'm gonna fast forward that for you, but let's see what happens. So, okay, let's see what is going on in the cluster right now. So as we hope it, after a new uh, swap between the primary and stage service, uh, I have two deployments, hopefully, because this is blue green, right guys? So let's see on the stage deployment, everything looks good, fantastic. My readiness probes are okay. Good, startup probes. But then uh, I see now the selectors were being swapped between each other. So hopefully we're going to have uh, both deployments at the same time in the target cluster. So let me open the subsystem again, just one second. And that's it. Let me clear, clean again, just to show you. So now I have the two plots, uh, one on 504 and the other on 505 here, this newer one. So I have two servers, so I can test both entry points and I have two deployments, one called blue and the other green. So let's see, first of all, I'm going to get the first service, which is the stable as always. So hopefully this is on version 505 this time. Let's see. Uh, let me remove this subsystem from your face. Okay, looking good. Let me just make sure the port is the same. It is. So 505. This is looking good, man. Let me get, grab the service port for the older uh, stable version. Just one second. Let me see with you. So the stage here suffix tells me that I should have another node part here. Uh, and node part is just uh, a term that I'm using here, guys. If you're running on a cloud provider, you should be using ingress or, I don't know, man, load balancers, right? So a target group would be sending uh, from one to the other. So that, that's how you, you can connect uh, this blue-green strategy with your cloud providers, okay? So let's see again. Let me close this subsystem. And I'm going back to the page here, and then let's see. Nice. Okay, it's looking fantastic. So that's it for blue green. You might expect some uh, uh, arguments uh, arguments about that. It's very opinionated because some people is uh, are already using the canary releases with feature flags, so it's easier to just release and do dark launches. But at the end of the video, we are going to talk about that as well. So let's see the canary deployments uh, next. So last but not least, my favorite one, the canary deployment. I have a video with a very intense deep dive on what happens under the hood while the canary is happening. But the deal here is similar to the blue green. But instead of having uh, like a two deployments running at the same time, I usually we usually uh, delete one of those older stable deployments when we know for sure that the canary is good. So the idea is very similar. We don't need ingresses or anything more complex than that uh, to start using canaries with harness. But uh, we should have one single entry point. Let's call a load balancer on a, on a cloud provider, like a, an application load balancer. And then when I'm doing uh, my religious stretches, let's say that I'm having the version 504 here. And then I start adding more pods in a new deployment, in a parallel deployment, as we do for blue-green. But uh, I'm doing with real production data. So with that single entry point, I have uh, customer traffic going to both versions at the same time. Because the service is going to use a generic selector that sends traffic to both deployment and replica sets. So at the same time that a user is consuming my page right here, they might be using version 504 and 505 at the same time. And we can control percentage. We can control the deployment with governance. We can stop every single percentage uh, increase and add CV steps like, hey, we have 50% of the traffic running on the new version and my application performance monitoring tool is not complaining. Uh, I don't have any new issues uh, compared to the baseline 
no latency impacts, no new HTTP errors. So I know for sure that I can keep rolling at the point that I just have the new version. So Harness is going to handle that for you using extra selectors and tags, labels, everything uh, as you already know. But if you want to take a look at the deep dive situation, what happens under the hood step by step, I have another video that I'm, uh, I'm going to link to the description of this one. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit uh, longer video, but it, it, uh, hopefully you will know for sure what happens exactly when you're doing releases. But just to wrap up between Blue Green and Canary, with Canary, you want at the same time uh, the user traffic to go to both versions. So you have a single load balancer, single DNS entry point, and your users might be using the, the two versions at the same time while you're running your tests uh, against real production traffic. Okay. All right. So before we wrap up the Canary, just let me show you a pipeline that might have a more realistic approach to Canaries in a real situation. We have this end-to-end -end commercial demo here. So now, as you can see, is a more complex pipeline. We have multiple stages, CI, CD, STO. And as you can see here uh, in the deployment to production, this is one of the shift left feedback situations that I told you guys. But as you can see, I have OPA, uh, OPA running, I have ITSM, Jira tickets. And when I'm, I do a canary release here, I can just uh, plug in the chaos engineering steps, like uh, pretend to halt a, a pod or do a CPU hog and run continuous verification. So on this demo right here, the CV step is telling that this new version is not good. The Prometheus and the Epidynamics, uh, they, they are both complaining about the new release. So it's better for you to just roll back. And as you can see, this is what happened here uh, after the, uh, the deployment failed, the CV. And this is totally configurable based on the baseline. And you can have action items here before failing. But on this demo, we just gave up of the new release during the canary. And then we decided to roll back to a stable version. So... That's the reason I really like canaries. You can add uh, as much as your SRE stack uh, that you have, you know, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a great way to integrate uh, and create trust between developers and operation teams. And now we are calling this as a platform engineer, but it's pretty much the, the whole thing on observability that the site reliability engineering proposes. So that's it. All right. So before I let you go, let me talk about feature flags real quick. Harness feature flags allow teams to toggle features on and off without needing to redeploy your application. So it's a powerful way to test these new features you are coding and trying to deliver, perform A-B testing, or even gradually rolling out changes without uh, really uh, impacting the customer experience. On the other hand, you may also release features to the production environment, but keep them hidden from those users. So it's a great way to ensure that everything works in the live environment for real, with real traffic, without impacting the experience. Uh, you know, it's super easy to roll back because you are just hiding that uh, function or, or feature from the target group or everyone in case of issues. So it might be even quicker and it's for real much simpler than doing a rollback or rolling forward your application to a stable version. But feature flags with harness are not only useful to quickly remove those issues from the journey without the need to redeploy, but they can also be used to serve different features and experience to different user groups, targets, and personas. You could have licensing tiers, geolocation groups, and so on. So you can th test any marketing or business hypothesis uh, you can have client and backend feature flags you can use uh, with React and Angular, you know, so to present a different experiences to a different persona. So I'm going to show you in a very simple way uh, what's the power of the Harness feature flags uh, in a real situation. Also, with Harness feature flags, you can release features to the production environment directly and keep them hidden from these users. So it's not only to roll back, but it's a great way to ensure everything works in the live environment without impacting the user experience. So instead of having to redeploy or 
get uh, the latest stable version and roll back or roll forward, you just uh, code your feature behind a, uh, a flag so, uh, supported by Harness, and then you can toggle that based on any criteria that you may, may want. So it might be a real bug issue that you need to hide that feature because it's not uh, going as you expected, or you can test like marketing stuff uh, by defining personas and target groups with Harness. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's talk about those feature flags that I'm using on this lab. So I have very dummy client feature flags that are going to be used to enable or disable uh, Harness modules. And my code is ready to react on that. So the front-end application is actually waiting to react to those events. So as soon as I toggle a feature flag, I might enable or disable uh, a module for a, giver, a given target or persona or a single user. So right now, let me log into here with a new user. So it's gonna be Gav's uh, demo at harness.io. So when I do that, I'm registering a new client here on the application. As you can see, let me just show you real quick what is the JavaScript doing right now. So the JavaScript is loading the tags at the flags, so I know my application is ready to be affected by that. And the same target here environment, which is production, is this one right here. So I can affect the situation per environment and per persona. So it's, it's very granular. I can define groups based on any dimension or metadata I have from the clients. And on this use case, let's play with the, with the React front end. So as you can see here, I just have the CI and the CD modules enabled, uh, but I want to give them some extra uh, modules for free right now. So I'm taking a look at the STO and CCM modules, and I know that when they are enabled, they are actually serving false. As you know, CD and CI, they are saving, serving true by default. So what's happening here? Why can't I see that? That's because the flag is sending false to the client uh, through the SDK. So let's say, that I want specifically for this target here. So let me go to the target management because it's, it's easier to play. I have this Gabs demo, okay. And I want to give this user access to the CCM module. So I'm just going to serve a variation for this specific user. It could be a target group again. So this is going to happen real quick and I don't have a way to share both uh, uh, side by side with you without blurring the, the demo share, but uh, I, I'll be quick because as soon as I toggle that, the module will appear here, CCM, see? And we can keep doing that. Like, let's suppose the CSM just sold a new module right here, so I can go via the feature flag panel, the STO, and say, okay, everyone is false, but I want to serve true to the gap demo. And as soon as I click here, STO. You know, so it is really powerful to, to use feature flags to detach the release process from the from the feature. So you can have a new artifact with the release, but uh, is hidden be behind a flag. And I can slowly and gradually, uh, gradually just start releasing to personas and targets. So that's it. I hope you like the feature flags, guys. Nice, we are done here. So Harness offers a plethora of deployment strategies, as you know now, each one tailored to different needs and scenarios. Whether you're a new startup or a huge enterprise, Harness has got you covered. And thank you for joining us today. Dive deeper into Harness and discover the future of deployment strategies and software delivery.